Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga was released back on the 6th of November 2007 and has remained one of the most popular Lego games of all time. But one of its most interesting aspects are its plethora of red bricks, which when unlocked can vary your playthrough significantly. Every single story level has one hidden red brick for you to find, totaling up to 36 red bricks and thus 36 extras respectively. In today's in today's video, I will be taking these red bricks and ranking them from worst to best on a basis of usefulness and how much I like them. With that said, let's get started. Poo money is literal crap in more ways than one, so this felt like a pretty safe choice for our last place extra. But for those less familiar with it, you may be wondering, what is poo money? Can Qui-Gon start using the toilet when he's off duty and start excreting cash? No. Poo money allows rideable animals to slowly poop out a random stud, which sounds like a good thing until you remember this is a Lego game and there are studs literally everywhere. Stop wasting your time with this poor banter and go farm the studs yourself and there are hardly any levels in this game with rideable animals anyway and if that's still not enough to convince you this extra is doo-doo the game straight up gives you the exact same extra for purchase right at the start of the game rendering poo money as redundant <laughs> When you first purchased Walkie Talkie Disable, you may think that this extra disables the Walkie Talkies of all the Battle Droid Commanders and the Imperial Spy. But if you've just bought the extra thinking that, you've been scammed! Instead, this is just an arbitrary extra for the aforementioned two characters that lets you stun nearby battle droids. Now, one might argue, Croco, that's great. Now the Imperial Spy and Battle Droid Commander aren't as useless. No. First of all, if you really want the Imperial Spy to be less useless, give him Imperial Panel Access. The clue is in the name. Why can't he use Imperial Doors? And secondly, battle droids only appear in the prequel levels anyway. So, so, Walkie Talkie Disable is made redundant for an entire trilogy. I do, however, give it minor credit for not being a copy pasted extra, and at least they made some sort of effort to make these two characters more useful, but it's still a really crap extra with too many reasons it shouldn't exist. <laughs> Disarmed Troopers turns clone, Stormtrooper, and Imperial Officer weapons into carrots. And your weapons too. If it wasn't for this one Achilles heel, I would have ranked Disarmed Troopers higher. But in a free play playthrough, this simply isn't a viable extra to have turned on considering how much you'll be playing as Imperial characters in the levels, especially in A New Hope when Stormtrooper panels are everywhere. This extra is just easier turned off. You probably wondered where I would rank Super Gonk, and to your surprise, no, I'm not going to put it at number one, or anywhere near for that matter. I get it, everybody and their mum loves Gonk Droid, but I'm not everybody and their mum. I just think this is a stupid extra to make the worst character in the game somewhat more bearable by running fast and jumping. But that still doesn't change the fact that the Gonk Droid has no abilities, so not like you're gonna get very far with it. Just like Walkie Talkie Disable, we have another arbitrary extra, this time designed for the Ugnaught and Jawa. Though, this one feels a lot more justified, as this is more of a weapon upgrade than a stupid gimmick. Essentially, the Super Zapper can stun Imperial enemies and destroy battle droids. Nothing groundbreaking, but still a nice added ability, and considering Ugnaught and Jawa are already useful for their cruel hatch ability, it feels more likely I'll use this than Walkie Talkie Disable with two very arbitrary characters. <laughs> This is basically the same principle as Super Zapper, but with the Astromech probes. And chances are, you're going to be playing as one of these three Astromechs a lot by default. So it's pretty useful in comparison to Super Zapper. Bounty Hunter Rockets is a borderline bottom tier extra, but 
kind of fun at the same time. I really like this bonus weapon given to the Fets, and it makes sense that we get this, considering Django uses this against you on Discovery on Kamino. The one thing I would change about this extra though, is that I wish you could control the rocket after it has been fired. While it is beneficial for locking onto enemies, I feel like this extra could have some really interesting ideas if it could just fly infinitely and be manually controlled. If thermal detonators aren't good enough for you, try super thermal detonators! Their explosion radius is a lot bigger and results in a much higher chance for you to destroy yourself. What a blast! Just take my word that this is the 29th best extra, okay? I like the idea of force pull, even if force push is more useful. However, unlike the aforementioned extras, this one is the first of which I've legitimately had a use for, albeit a minor use, but a use nonetheless. In the sixth bonus level, New Town, there are a couple of gonk droids you can destroy by breaking them with force pull. I know it's a very, very minor advantage, but having a use for an extra besides purposely looking for a way to make it useful qualifies force pull for our first D tier extra. In number 27, we have Tractor Beam. Huh? Yeah, this one isn't very clear on what it does. Tractor Beam is an extra that pulls ships towards you. Not only does this make destroying enemy vehicles a lot easier, but it also helps drastically in the first room of 6-6, as tracking down those TIE Fighter ships with the torpedoes, trust me bud, it ain't fun. Also, while this doesn't affect its ranking, I really like the added detail of putting this as the extra for 4-4, you know, the level where the Millennium Falcon is pulled in by a tractor beam, ah, fair play. Why slap like this, when you can slap like this? Let's watch my favorite part again. Super slap boosts melee damage from one heart to two hearts, which makes killing enemies like Gamorrean guards a whole lot more bearable. Are you tired of your droids being so boring to play? Then rip them up with some TNT! Okay, okay, let's actually talk about self-destruct. Pressing the button to put your weapon away allows your poor droids to explode, which not only clears out waves of enemies, but can also clear obstacles you would normally need explosives or a turret to break down. While this is a super handy ability, it's also really easy to blow yourself up by accident, like pressing the panel button too early. And while it's nice it can break shiny metallic objects, there are plenty of better alternatives which we will see on this list. Super Ewok Catapult on one hand is a nice little extra for destroying explosive walls, just like self destruct, and the explosive shots can be fired without destroying yourself in the process. <laughs> But this extra suffers badly with two major flaws. One, there are only two characters in the game that can use Super Ewok Catapult, so it's pretty unlikely you'll be really using this extra much. And two, while I know this is an unfair point to make, it's the very last extra in the game that's impossible to obtain through story mode. So if you're collecting all the unlockables in level order, you'll pretty much get no time to use this one whatsoever. Moving up to the C tier, we begin the C tier with Vehicle Smart Bomb. Here we have the extras I wouldn't immediately jump for, but are still pretty good nonetheless. Vehicle Smart Bomb clears out all the enemy vehicles on the screen by holding the torpedo button, which benefits you greatly in the last room of Hoth Battle for example. In fact, this is one of the three red bricks collected in an any percent run because of just how great this is for wiping out enemy vehicles. And also because this can be obtained through story mode, but it's still a really good extra, so buy it. This is a really cool extra as it allows you to access certain areas and collectibles through story modes that you wouldn't normally be able to unlock. For example, the final mini kit of Jabba's Palace, the mini kit before the cave in Dagobah, and the upper level in the second room of Darth Maul. And let's be real, there is something really cool about flipping up a grapple point with a Jedi. channel your inner dark side with an extra that quite literally turns you to the dark side. That can't be. Darth Yoda. Darth Windu. Even Darth Grievous. 
This is getting out of hand. But what exactly is the benefit of Darkseid? Besides a pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. You may notice that in almost every level, there's a whole bunch of black and red glowing Lego objects that can only be manipulated by Darkseid users. Well, thanks to this extra, any character with a lightsaber can now interact with these too, and this unlocks new possibilities for mini kits that can be collected through story mode. Do you hate losing your keys? Do you hate losing your phone? Do you hate losing power bricks? Well, this extra can help with one of those problems at least. Power brick detector is acquired early on in the game during the pod race level and when activated will reveal the location of a power brick when you're in the same area as one. On one hand, this extra is extremely helpful for first timers, but on the other hand, those replaying the game won't really need the detectors. So. I decided that mid C tier is a fair spot to justify both arguments. Defaultly, the mini kit detector scores above the power brick detector, but you probably already knew that, considering there are 10 times as many mini kits as red bricks. And in a level like Bounty Hunter Pursuit, where you have to destroy a certain number of something to release the mini kit, the detector does a nice job at pointing everything out for you so you don't miss one. Once again, it's up for debate on where the mini kit detector should score, considering that if you already know where all the mini kits are, this one's redundant. But I still argue that for newer players, this is a really good extra to have. So I think it's fair to give this one 19th place. Considering that lightsaber characters are going to be your most played characters overall, it makes sense that an extra that buffs lightsaber characters would rank so well. Perfect deflect perfectly deflects bolts with no defects because this extra is perfect. Got that? Disclaimer, this extra is not perfect, but it's still pretty good. So now we've entered the B tier on the tier list, and this is where the extras are all super useful. Deflect Bolts basically makes you immune to all blaster bolts, but still susceptible to melee attacks. So you're not fully invincible, my friend. And this extra does not apply to vehicle missions, but don't let that fool you. It's extremely useful to have nonetheless, and there are pretty much no reasons to have this one turned off, unless you're too cool for protection. We all have our pet peeves in life, losing the internet, waiting in queues, screaming babies in the cinema, and those annoying enemies that take an extra blaster hit to kill. Looking at you here, Imperial Officer. While I can't offer you legal advice for the other problems, I can, however, offer you a solution to the latter. Super Blasters. It basically does two hearts of damage for every blaster shot, except on bosses. But trust me, this extra makes life a lot easier. Victory! When I first heard about Super Jedi Slam, I thought, all right, but I was wrong. Super Jedi Slam is the second best super extra, as not only does it increase the range of your slam, but it also does infinite damage to everything except bosses. So this is a perfect extra for clearing out large waves of enemies or Gamorrean guards. <laughs> Have I expressed how much I hate these guys yet? No, will I do? There is no reason not to buy this extra. You could quite literally make your Jedi characters OP. And the best of the super extras is super lightsabers. All the Jedi Council members were jealous of Samuel Jackson's purple blade, and now they could all have their own. Mace Yoda? Mace Kenobi? No, this doesn't work. But super lightsabers does double lightsaber damage output, so you know who you can kill in one slash. <laughs> Combined with Super Jedi Slam, your Jedi can be buff. Do you remember right at the start of the video when I crapped all over Poo Money? Well, now we're at the first of the extras that make it look even more redundant. Character Studs essentially turns all fallen enemies into studs, which is a really great way to save for new items at the shop or to get true Jedi, especially in dense enemy levels like Kashyyyk or Jedi Battle. There's an extra which pairs up perfectly with this. I won't say which as we're not quite there yet, but I'll say this much. You unlock it in Bounty Hunter Pursuit. So if you know, you know. I favoured the stud pickup extras greatly in this ranking video due to just how essential studs are in LEGO games. 
There's no denying that Regenerate Hearts is a fantastic extra, no matter the occasion. Not having to worry about dying in a level is a huge weight off your shoulder, albeit not impossible, but just a whole lot less likely. And considering how many enemies the game throws at you, hearts are valuable. Just missing the top 10, but not the A tier spot, is Fast Force. You really don't need me to spell it out for you why this is such a great extra. Fast Force just makes life easier, and so do the rest of the extras on this list. And this particular red brick saves a lot of time in the long run, and is a favorite of speedrunners. As for the other fast extra, 10 guesses what fast build does. You build faster. But I can't deny that this extra is an absolute must have. There is a room in Death Star Escape where fast force is absolutely crucial. And thankfully, the game gives you a power up to compensate. Because trust me, if you lose the power up, you're in for a long day. <laughs> Oh. While it's true that there's no building in the prequel levels, there's plenty of building in the original trilogy levels. So trust me, this extra will be pivotal. I'm genuinely curious how fast an any percent run could be if this extra was factored in. This would easily smash the very first sub 220 run. No, it's in a really horrible spot. It's in a free play area in the last episode of the run. So unfortunately, Fast build will never get any representation. A moment of silence for fast build. Okay, let's move on. You knew this was coming. The stud multipliers. Present in every LEGO game, stud multipliers have the simple role of multiplying stud pickups, which both facilitates farming money and getting true Jedi. In this case, studs times two will double stud output. So picking up a blue stud will grant you 2,000 studs instead of 1,000 for example. There are 5 stud multipliers and of course studs times 2 is the lowest so it ranks the lowest. But it's still a really great extra as this is most likely going to be the first stud multiplier you unlock and definitely the extra I recommend purchasing first because there's a lot of expensive stuff in this game so you might as well get saving. As expected, stud times 4 quadruples stud output, and stud multipliers will multiply each other. So having studs times 2 and times 4 active together will times your stud output by 8. Well, there's your free maths lesson for the day. Don't act too surprised. You saw this one coming. Having studs times 2, 4, and 6 active together will multiply your stud output by 48. At that point, you're overpowered and you basically destroyed the game's economy. What have I done? By the time you unlock studs times A, you probably have everything in the game already unlocked. But who can say no to more studs and crashing economies? You get the idea. We probably could it's a local now. And the last of the stud multipliers, studs times 10. With all the stud multipliers in hand, you too can multiply your studs by 3,840. Yeah, the cantina shop ain't coming back from this one, chief. However, this extra does cost 40 million studs. So while it is useful to have, one could also make the argument that it is somewhat redundant, as by the time you can afford it, you'll already have everything else purchased, unless you specifically saved for this stud multiplier first, but there's not really any reason to do that. Although I like stud multipliers, there are four extras that I value more than them. Starting off with stud magnet. And where do I even start with this one? It's acquired early in the game and it's a fantastic way to farm studs throughout your journey. Combined with extras like character studs, you can shake more studs out of every level. And I don't need to say this again, but I will. Studs are important, my friend. You're not gonna beat the game without them. We've got to have money. 
Infinite Torpedoes is a godsend. Not having to worry about collecting torpedoes makes the original trilogy vehicle levels a whole lot more playable, especially the likes of 6-6 -6, that would otherwise have you chasing ships for RNG torpedo drops and an absolutely awful asteroid at the end of 5-3. There's no denying that this extra deserves an S tier. It's also part of the reason why episode 6 is played before episode 5 in an any percent run too, to make Falcon can fly less of a nightmare. There's no denying that throughout your journey in LEGO Star Wars, you'll be dying a lot. He's holding me back! Not again. Obi-Wan's gonna kill me. And with invincibility, enemies can shoot you day in and day out and you don't have to worry about taking a scratch. And don't act like you're too cool for invincibility. Lego Stormtroopers have better aim than you think. But wait, there is still one more extra that tops not being able to die. What could it possibly be? And at number one is exploding blaster bolts. By far the greatest extra for usefulness and speedrunning. There are plenty of puzzles in the original trilogy levels that block you off with metal or reinforced walls. But with exploding blaster bolts, you can just shoot your way through all of them. And best of all, this extra is given as a freebie through Gunship Cavalry's story playthrough. Its multifunctional purpose makes it the best. And you best believe that I will be using it in my 10 hour speedrun challenge on May the 11th. I hope to see you there.